once again, let us bow our head and let us come to the Lord in prayer. Amin Diyos, kami po ay muli na malapit sa inyo sa sandaling ito. Lord, itulog nyo na ang mga spirito. Ang siyang patuloy na pagpuro sa amin, maunawaan namin ang mga mensahe para sa amin sa hapong ito. Sa amin, mga personal, mga application, even sa amin sa kongregasyon. Lord, dakilain niyo po ang iyong pangalan sa aming magpapatuloy at sa bunga na ang iyong balang spirito, Panginoon, ay itutulog sa buhay ng bawat isa. Maraming salamat po sa dakilang pangalan ng aming mga Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yung ating konteksto ay masumbungan sa Luke chapter 9, verses 37 hanggang verses 45. Luke chapter 9, verses 37 hanggang verse 45. Kung may mga Bible po kayo, inahin niya ako yung sundan niyo ako sa pagbasa. I'll be reading from the ESV, English Standard Version. Luke chapter 9, verses 37 to 45. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. And behold, a man from the crowd cried out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. And behold, a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out. It convulses him so that he foams at his mouth and shatters him, and will hardly leave him. I beg your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, O oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long I am to be with you and bear with you. Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon threw him to the ground and convulsed him. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the majesty of God. But while they were all marveling at everything he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, Let this sink into your ears. The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand the saying, and it was concealed from them, so that They, may, they might not perceive, perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about this saying. Ito po yung buhay na salita ng ating buhay na Diyos. Nagsimula po siya sa verse 37 na sabi doon, On the next day, when they came down from the mountain. So, yung prior day, ito po yung transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ before the eyes of Peter, James, and John. Abang yung nine disciples, nandun sila sa ibaba ng mundo, yung tatlong disipulo, kasama ng ating Pangusus, nasaksihan nila yung tinatawag na mountaintop experience. It's a mountaintop experience because they have seen the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ from Baal. It was built, but then they saw a glimpse of the glorious transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ that He was shining bright, exceeding even the brightness ng sun or ng noonday. Yun po yung nasaksihan ng tatlong disipulo. Perhaps it was night time or bago mag, uh, maggabi nung nasaksihan nila yun. And then, nag-stay pa sila doon. And the next day, ito po yung sinasabi sa verse 37, On the next day, they came down from the mountain. Makita natin yung sabi ni Pedro sa ating Panginoong Sus, Lord, let us remain here and build three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Perhaps sinasabi ni Pedro, let us take hold of this experience that we have had. Hayaan natin na manatili ito. Huwag natin hayaang mawala. Gusto natin masaksihan yung glory ng ating Panginoong Sus. They are not willing to come down. 
But then makita natin, the Lord Jesus Christ, ang plano niya para sa kanyang mga alagad, at even yung plano niya, the reason why He came down from heaven, is the same reason na bababa siya mula dun sa mundo to be with the people. It's not to live in isolation. Afa, na malayo dun sa mga tao. Hindi po. Bumaba silang muli sa kabila ng kanilang mountain top experience they have to go down, makita yung mga tao and be dun sa totoong buhay. Hindi yung kung ano, totoo yung nangyari sa Mount of Transfiguration, but then it's not yet the time to be with the Lord dun sa kanyang glory na kung saan makakasan natin fullness pagdating natin sa kalangitan sa presensya niya. But meantime, while we are here, we have to work. We have to minister. That's why he, along with the three disciples, they came down dun sa down of the mountain. So from top, they went down to minister to the people. Ito po minsan yung hindi natin ma o misconception ng maraming tao na it seems akala natin we have this presupposition na pag naging kristyano ka, everything is well and good and you have to isolate yourself from the people and live na para kang isang ermitanyo. Hindi po yun ang Christianity. Christianity, kaya ng panalangin ng ating pang Lord. They are of the world. They are in the world, but they are not of. They are in the world, but they are not of the world, because they have taken out from the world. They are not no longer belong from the world, but yet they are remaining in the world. And so I pray, Father, keep them, preserve them. Yun ang panalangin ng ating pangsus. He could have taken us with him, but then, yung plano niya, not yet. The plan is for us to remain, be a salt of the earth, light of the world, until such time, sabihin niya, Come home, my son. Come home, my daughter. You have done your part. But until that day, the dating sa atin, so makin natin dito, he went down, from the mountain, and a great crowd met him. Lang natin dito, yung unang yugto, yung time of desperation. Time of desperation, sa kabila ng mountain top experience, down yung kanyang mga alagad, yung siya, they were desperately in a situation na kung saan, they were so helpless even. So it's a verse 38, and behold, a man from the crowd, so there was this great crowd in verse 37, verse 38, among the crowd, there is this one man crying out, Teacher, I beg you, look at my son, for he is my only child. Look, this guy is his only child. In the mountain top, the father said to the son, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. He so feel full of the Holy Spirit, whereas down the mountain, there's this only son whom he was possessed, not filled by the Holy Spirit, but possessed by an evil spirit. And his father's not so pleased, but he was desperate. Makan natin yung contrast, in the mountain, there's this God, he's so pleased with his son, because he's filled with the Holy Spirit, while down the mountain, there's a father who is miserable, who is desperate, and his son is possessed by an evil spirit. And then Sabidon, I beg you, look at my son, who is my own child. During that time po, iba sa ating panahon ngayon, during that time, meron siya tinatawag na pag wala kang anak na lalaki, yung lineage mo ay mamamatay. No one will carry yung iyong pangalan. Para sa kanila, it was a big deal that someone will carry out your lineage para yung 12 tribes ay magpatuloy. But then sabi niya, He's my only child. And I beg you, sabi niya, and verse 39, and behold, spirit ceases him and suddenly cries out, 
convulses him, for he, so that he foams at, his, at the mouth and shatters him. Sabi doon, the, the evil spirit, sabi doon, ceases, yung ceases doon is a violent word. Hindi lang mag-attack, but take control of him. And suddenly cries out and convulses him that the mouth, he foams at the mouth and shatters him. Yung word na shatters doon is to destroy him. Si Matthew, mag, may maganda siyang dis- description na binigay, o even si Mark, recorded po ito sa Matthew at even sa Mark. Pag titin natin yung Mark chapter 9, may siyang, may siyang picture na binigay na hindi binigay ni Luke. Sabi sa Mark chapter 9, How long this has been happening? Sabi sa verse 21. Verse 21, the Lord Jesus Christ asked the Father, How long this has been happening to him? He said, From childhood. And it opened past him into fire and into water to destroy him. So this evil spirit controlled this boy from childhood. During that time, yung katulang pagluluto ay magsisigasan ng apoy. And for, a, for sometimes, they will leave yung apoy na yon until magluto siya ta ulit. As sabi doon, the evil spirit take control of the kid and jump dun sa, sa apoy. And jump dun sa well, yung well, mga balon. It wants to destroy yung bata na to. So makita natin yung firstly, yung desperate condition ng ama na kung saan he cannot do anything. Umabot siya ng mula, bata siya, until this time. Wala siya magawa. And imagine yung, yung ridicule na meron o yung suffering, desperation na meron siya. From that time onward, binabantay niya anak niya, yung mga bata, si Job, si Ezra, pabayaan mo lang na sandali, nakuntog na yung ulo niya, yung nanay niya, is na high blood na, nakuntog lang yun. Pero yung bata na ito, dinadala niya sa apoy yung kanyang sarili, at pumunta sa balon to destroy himself. Imagine yung burden, yung desperation na meron yung ama na to. Considering na isa lang siyang anak. Makita po natin yung in times of desperation, makita natin kung kanino tayo tatakbo. Kanino siya tumakbo? Tumakbo siya sa Panginoong Sus. Not to any other people. Perhaps ginawa na yung, yung mga iba na yun. But then makita natin dito, He went to the Lord. In times of desperation, it's point us, we have to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. And no other, hindi na, wala nang iba. Because He Himself will direct us kung saan yung tulong na yung pagkakalog niya. But first, we have to go doon sa ating Panginoong Sus. So makita natin, in times of desperation, we seek the Lord. Actually, not just in time of desperation, even in times of celebration. But then, makita natin dito, yung destructive power ng ni Satan. Makita natin dito, Satan wants to destroy this boy. Same thing, Satan wants to destroy Jesus Christ. Same thing, Satan wants to destroy the church and wants to destroy Christians. Si Satan po is real. He is real. And he is destructive. Yung bata na to, gusto niyang i-destroy. By putting him into the fire, by putting him into the water or the sewer. Why? He want him destructive. He want him to destroy, to shatter. Yung shatter, para bang bote na sinyatered mo, broken. Ganun yung gusto ni Satan. He want to break us. He want to break the church. That's why Satan works in and out of the church. In and out sa ating mga buhay to destroy us. Satan want to take out from us yung joy that we have. Satan want to take out from us yung anaman na pinagkalob sa atin ng ating Panginoong Sus. He want Kung paano na binrate niya yung sweet fellowship ni Eve, ni Adam, sa Diyos, he want to maintain that. If he can only maintain that, he will be happy. But then, praise God, 
Pinadala niya ang kanyang buktong na anak so that we may not remain desperate, we will not remain dun sa bound as a tyranny o dun sa power ni Satan. Bakit natin dito, bata pa lang siya, under na siya dun sa control ng Diablo. The truth is, sabi dun sa uh, John chapter 8 verse 44, there's only two families na bawat isa ay belong sa so either you are belong to God as your father is your father or the devil is your father. Anyone who is in Christ and sa Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 has been transferred from the power of darkness into the power of His marvelous light. Yun ang pagkakaiba. Before we are all darkness, we are all children of the devil. We were born as children of the devil because we were all sinners by birth, by conception. And so when we came out from the world, we are all sinners under the dominion tyranny of Satan. But then, by the grace of God, if one person is born again, John 3.3, 3, he became a new man, a new person, the identity of Christ. Yun sinelyohan siya. Na kung saan, from children of the devil, we became children of God. So, back na natin dito, even children, sabi dito, they were possessed by the devil. And his power is destructive and his power is real. So praise God na po tayo na nandito ay mga Kristiyano and have that compassion toward those people outside who do not know Christ. Because hindi nila alam, they were under the tyranny, under the power of Satan. Unless they are born again, they, not only they can see, the kingdom of God, but there's no way for them to get out, to get free doon sa paghahari ni Satan. Satan's power is destructive. He wants us destroyed. He wants you destroyed. He wants his church destroyed. He will not win against God, and so he will work to the people of God. Kung paano Satan loves destroying Job, because he cannot touch God, but he can touch us. And sometimes even si Pedro, after saying, Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Diba? Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal it to you. But my Father who was in heaven revealed it to you. What a blessed confession na meron si Pedro as he was given, uh, he received from God the Father. And yet, just a verse later, nung sabi ng ating pangs, I must go to Jerusalem and there I will suffer and die. Ang sabi ni Satan, ang sabi ni Pedro, Lord, far be it from you. Lord, God forbid. Ang sabi ng ating pangs, from blessed are you, Simon, now is get behind me, Satan. Even Satan can work through Peter by aligning Peter to the will of Satan. The difference is an unbeliever can be possessed and obsessed by a demon. Obsessed and possessed. What young believer can only be obs uh, suppressed Pwede tayong pahirapan, pwede tayong isuppress ni Satan. But he cannot possess us. Lahat tayong pagkakaiba ng Kristiyano. Why? Sabi po sa 1 Corinthians 3.16, sabi sa 1 Corinthians 3.19, we have the Holy Spirit and God dwells within us. Satan and God cannot dwell in the same place. Matapun natin dito na kung saan, yes, Satan cannot possess us, cannot dwell within us, but then he can suppress us. And he can cause us na kung saan, among us, kung paano si Pedro ay ginamit ng Diablo, he can use also each one of us to destroy 
us. And we have to be sober patungkol po doon sa tricks, doon sa spirit ni Satan. And as sabi doon, verse 14, makita natin yung again, desperation not just of the father, desperation of the son, even the desperation of the disciples. Sabi doon, I beg your disciples to cast it out. But they could not. Luke chapter 9, verse 1, the Lord gave them the power over all spirits. And it's in Luke chapter 9, verse 1, and he called the twelve together and gave them the power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. All demons. But what happened? While the Lord Jesus Christ is having conversation with Moses, Elijah, and the three disciples, Peter, James, and John, they experienced the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. The nine disciples down there, they are hopeless, desperate, and sabi dun sa Mark, they are having dialogue, conversation, dun sa mga escriba, mga sadeseyo, and perhaps they are saying, where's your power? Perhaps they are being questioned, na kung saan, see, nasaan yung power nyo? See, perhaps you are just hooks, just like your master. Where is your master? Perhaps yun yung binabato sa kanila. They were unable, they were desperate. It's not because they do not have the power. The power was given to them. But because Sabi sa Matthew, this kind of demon can only be dealt by prayer. Perhaps they trust dun sa kanilang sariling power. We have done it many times. They were sent, right? And then when they came back, they are rejoicing. Even the demons obey them. And perhaps this time, they thought that the power was innate or yung napangyarihan ay nandun natural sa kanila. And so they trusted within their own might, with all their own strength. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, even in Mark, such demon can only be cast out by prayer and even by fasting. The more we pray, the more we fast, we seek dependency, showing our trust, doing some just, not with our earthly or fleshly na may or strength, but yung ating dependence doon sa sa Diyos. Atan natin, desperation ng tatay, desperate, helpless ng mga disciples. That's what happened po, pag siya, kaya nga sabi ni Pedro, di ba? Kaya sabi ni Pedro, oh, you are foolish Galatian. Have you begun by the Spirit and not trying to be perfected by the flesh? Sabi niya, the flesh profit nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's why sabi, ng, sabi ni Pedro, di ba mo lagi, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritualities, rulers, against the prince of the power of the air. Our battle is spiritual. Our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors are mere instruments used by God like a pony to say some chessboard. They are instruments. Hindi po sila yung enemy. So, what po natin dito? We will be in a desperate condition, situation, if we rely on sa ating sarili ng kakayahan. Don't say na, I am so strong, I am so... Ito yung mga napagtagumpwente na. That's why I wonder why the Lord Jesus, uh, God the Father, nung sa, nandun sila sa Exodus, wilderness, whenever si Moses instruct niya, sometimes he will tell na, instruct the rock, and water will come up. So, inukuk niya. And there are times, sabi ng Diyos, talk to the rock. And then, maglalabas siya ng tubig. Pinukpok pa rin niya. Sometimes, the dealing of the Lord is iba-iba. So that, huwag tayong matuto dun sa mga memory lang. 
Takong saan? Hindi eh. Lagi ganito umubo eh. So, Lord, ngunit muna sa'yo ngayon, Lord, I can manage it. Napagtagumpayan ko kanina, Lord, this time, it's the same result. But, that's not what happened. Sa so, mata natin dito, sabi ng ating pangsus, O oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long I am to be with you and bear with you. It seems like prostration. But of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, He knows everything. But then, even na alam niya lahat, it's so prostrating na mga alagad mo, you have given them the power and yet unable to deliver or tulungan yung isang ama na desperado. And then, actually, there's also a rebuke to the Father. Pagka mabasahin mo yung kay, kay Mark, sabi doon, Mark chapter 9 verse 22, sabi po dito, sabi sa Mark chapter 9 verse 22, and <coughs> tinanong siya, so lumapit siya sa ating pangusus, sabi niya, but, so after niya sinabi na, throw him into the fire and the water to destroy him, at ikasunod, sa in verse 22, but, nagtasal tayo ng tatay, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Ang sinasabi niya, if you can do anything. So lumapit siya sa ating pangsus, seeking help, seeking compassion, and yet sabi niya, if you can do anything. Ano sa gitna ng ating pangsus? Let me try. Perhaps I have the power. Sabi niya, sabi ng ating pangsus, Jesus said to him, if you can, with exclamation point, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Sabi niya, all things are possible. To whom? For whom? For one who believes. In fact, sabi niya ng ating post later on, moving forward, sabi niya, dun sa Mark chapter 11, verse 22, this answered sa kanyang mga alagad kasi nag sila na yung fig tree instantly nag yung fig tree kasi walang bunga. And then sabi ng ating pangsus sa verse 22 ng Mark chapter 11, Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken out and thrown into the sea, it and does not doubt in his heart, but believe what he says will come to pass. Sabi niya, believe. At that's an end there. Believe in God. Ay na sinasabi, believe doesn't have power in and of itself. Wala pong power yung believe. Walang power yung faith. The power rests on the object of faith. Believe in God. Sabi niya, Believe in God because in God there lies the power, not by faith, not by doctrine. You can believe all the doctrine, all the Calvinism, all the Augustine na belief, and you will be just like Satan. Ba? Satan, ang sabi ni James, you believe God is one, very good, praise God, very well. Satan also believes and trembles, but Satan doesn't obey what the word says. He believes in his head. He has theology, but he doesn't have application. So, makita natin dito, going back to Luke chapter 9, makita dito, perhaps the rebuke is towards the unbelieving mga Israelites, dun sa father who has a little faith, at even sa mga alagaan, and perhaps even sa atin. Oh, sabi niya, Faithless and twisted, twisted, they say perverted, perverted generation, how long I am to be with you and bear with you? How long shall I bear with you? How long shall I have patience over you? And then, Salinya, bring here your son. Actually, the good thing is, 
Nirebuke siya ng Panginoon. Even yung tatay, nirebuke siya. But then actually, yung tatay, maganda yung sinabi niya pag babasahin niya yung sa Mark. Sabi niya, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. He recognized that his faith is shallow. His faith is in one. Ibig sabihin, kulang. But then, sabi niya, Lord, help my unbelief. That is actually a doctrine. Because our faith is freely given by God. Saan, Lord, I will, I have this small thing I knew about you. And yet, I have so many questions. Lord, help me settle this once and for all. And the Lord will give graciously sa atin. Yun po yung sabi ni James. God gives graciously to those who ask. Kaya sabi niya, verse 41, verse 42, while he was coming, the demon threw him to the ground and convulsed him. Nakita natin dito, as he was coming, the demon threw him into the ground and convulsed him. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy. Very fascinating. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Hindi siya naglagay ng napakaraming description kung anong ginawa ng Panginoon na no, nagpray siya ng ganito, napakaaba, ang daming drama, wala sa lang nilagay na napakarami. They simply wrote, and Jesus helped or healed the boy and instructed yung demon never to come back again to this boy. Wala maraming drama. Because hindi yung mahalaga kung paan niya pinagaling. The fact is, he healed the boy shows he has power over the demons over the evil spirits. Sabi natin kanina, di ba? All unbelievers, they can be possessed, obsessed, and even suppressed by evil spirit. But praise God, our Savior, He has authority over all evil spirit, and He can cast out and heal sino man pinopossess, no obsessed, sino suppressed ng evil spirit. Sabihin, the Lord Jesus Christ is the cure. The Lord Jesus Christ is the deliverer. He can deliver us from whatever desperate situation and destructive attack ni Satan. No amount of desperation, no amount of destructive power para hindi tayo lumapit sa ating houses. And then sabi doon, so, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, killed the boy, eto nakita natin dito, and gave him back to his father. Lagi akong naatis doon sa, mahala niyo si Tabita, di ba, Talita ko, nung pinag, pinagaling niya yung bata, binalik niya sa kanyang, sa kanyang magulang. Even yung sa, sa doon sa pinagaling na patay na na bata, on the way pupunta sa libingan, binuhay ng pangs, and then binalik niya sa kanyang, sa kanyang nanay na widow. Mahala natin dito, yung work ng ating Pangsus is to restore what was lost because of sin. Yung tao na to, who's been possessed, or bata na to, possessed by the evil spirit because of sin, ito yung resulta. Sin rule. Of course, God rule. But this world ay pinuputakte o inimplague. Ano mga plague sa Tagalog? Uh, salot. Sinasalot ng mga because of sin, sinasalot ng ng ano naman, ng mga uh, kademonyohan. And sabi dito, tapong saan, but when the boy was healed, he was brought back dun sa kanyang ama. Ito yung isa sa ministry ng ating pang, Panginoos. To restore what was lost because of sin. Ito yung deliverance. Ito na tawag. Our condition is so desperate because the power of Satan is so destructive, but God's power is so, because His deity is God, the Lord Jesus Christ, He is our hope, He is our deliverer. He can deliver us and restore what was lost because of sin. Binalik niya sa kanyang tatay to enjoy yung kung ano man nawala. Imagine nyo, from the time na yung bata na yon, in-obsessed, pinosessed siya ng evil spirit, he was 
Like, he was lost. Nawala siya sa kanyang tatay. And he was possessed by the demon. But then, because of the deliverance that Jesus brought, he brought him back to sa kanyang tatay that he may, they may enjoy yung sweet fellowship nila bilang bagama. Yun po yung salvation natin. Once upon a time, we were all under the tyranny, under the suppression, even possession of Satan. But by God's grace, when we were saved, we were transferred to the kingdom of Satan and we were given a new home, new family, and a new name. Christian, Christ with us. And so, our relationship with God the Father has been restored. We have been reconciled with God the Father. And we can come, approach Him boldly. Sabi ng Hebrews, because of what Christ has done, let us come, draw near to God with confidence and with boldness. Why? Because Christ has done it all. His work is to reconcile us back to God the Father. And even, not just to God the Father, because when we restore your ating relations to Diyos Ama, then we can have our relationship restored with one another. Why? Because there's one spirit na nananahan sa atin. We have one language that is love. Before, it's love, it's hate. But then, because of what Christ has done, the Holy Spirit residing among us and within us, it caused us na kung saan to love God above all else and love our neighbors as ourselves. It's only possible because of what Christ has done and because of the Holy Spirit residing and conforming us dun sa image and will ng ating Ama. And then sabi niya, verse, dulo ng verse 42, okay, was still joke, and then was brought back to the Father, and we're all astonished at the majesty of God. Nakita niya dito, sabi doon, and we're all, all were astonished at the majesty of God. Mata po natin dito, God is so magnified. The majesty of God is so magnified dun sa word ng kanyang anak. Sa word ng kanyang anak ng ating Pong Jesus. They don't say, wow, glory to Jesus Christ. Of, of course, he was, he was healed. But then, the glory, the acclamation is to God the Father. Ito po yung sabi natin lagi na Solely the glory that God would be glorified in our lives, in our speech, in our action, in our, in our church, and in us as individual. <clears throat> that people will see the majestic work of Christ within us. That they will say, it's not possible sa sahil lang yan. It's only possible because of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highness. It's not glory to us. What we have is the joy. But God has the glory. So, mata po natin dito, sometimes, sinasabi natin sa ating mga sinin, kung lamang, na para bang, yung nagtatrabaho tayo para sa Panginoon, because of the reward, because of the acclamation, because of the mga papuri. That's not the way it works for. God's so gracious na kung saan, even actually, before tayo naging worthy, He freely given to us yung kanyang anak. And the only reason why we do what we do is because of the sheer gratitude, sheer love that overflows sa ating mga puso because the love of God abounds sa ating mga puso na ginagawa natin yung mga ginagawa natin. It's not because for any reward na kaakibat ng ginagawa natin. The reward will follow us. Then, that's not the motivation. The motivation is because of the sheer joy, sheer gratitude that we have for God because of what He has done. And as we do yung mga bagay na ginagawa dapat natin, as Christian, carrying His name, God will be glorified 
as people observe our good works, God the Father will be glorified by the people around us. And sabi doon, bakit nyo doon, while we're there are stories and giving glory to God, sabi doon, but, sabi sa, but while all were marveling, marveling is like astonished, they are all wonder, my marveling at everything he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, ito yung sabi niya, when was the last time yung narinig niyo po, yung sinabi niya sa inyong mga anak, let this sink into your ears. Timothy, tandaan mo to. Job, makinig ka. Diba? Sabi ng ating pangs, while the people are rejoicing, celebrating, and marveling at everything he was doing, he says, let this word sink in your ears. The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. Ano ba? Killjoy ba? Ano ba? Sa verse 22, sinabi na niya ito, sabi sa verse 22 ng same chapter, saying the Son of Man, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day, he will be raised. Sinabi na niya po ito, verse 22, and this time, sinasabi na naman niya, why? Because his disciples, sabi doon, babasahin ko ulit, verse 45, but they did not understand the same. It was concealed from them so that they may not perceive it and were afraid to ask about the same. Parang kung negative dito sa, sa verse na to. First negative, but they did not understand the same. They did not understand the same. Why? Negative number two. For it was concealed from them. It was hidden from them. So that they might not, another negative, they might not perceive, perceive, maintindihan, maggrass. Narinig nila, seeing they cannot see, hearing they cannot hear. And, last negative, they were afraid to ask him about this same. Hindi nila naintindihan, hindi nila naggrass, and yet they were afraid to ask him of the same. Na ask him, the Lord Jesus Christ is so meek. Anyone who comes to him, he will not reject, he will not despise. Nalala niya si Nicodemus, he came to him by night. Lord, how can a person be born again? He gave him how a person is to be born again. Very, very patiently. Kinawid po niya, he walked with him. Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Pinaluwanag niya what it meant to be born again. But yes, may mga tao nagtatanong sa kanya. Tatanong nila is, para siluhin ang ating Panginoong Sus. Marami mga beses, nagtatanong yung mga skriba, mga pariseyo, para siya uh, ibasilo so that they might have something against him na ibabalidadalay sa mga Roman, uh, Roman authority. Uh, sabi nila, kanino sabi, nagtatanong sila sa kanya, kanong, kaninong authority yung meron ka? Bakit mo ginagawa yung mga ginagawa mo? Sabi niya sa kanila, of course sa Diyos, hindi niya sasagot na gano'n. Sabi lang niya, because he knew their hearts, okay, let me ask you a question also. Kaninong authority meron si John the Baptist para magbaptize? Sa Diyos o sa tao? Ang sabi ng mga skriba, pag sinabi natin sa tao, Babatuhin tayo ng mga tao. Bakit? Niniwala yung mga tao. Pag nasinabi natin sa Diyos, sabi ng mga tao, bakit hindi kayo niniwala sa Kanya? Sabi natin, hindi natin alam. Why? Because they were hypocrites. They were not sincere. So sa kanilang tanong, but anyone who sincerely approached the Lord, He will give a sincere, honest, and very gentle na sagot. But yung mga lagad, they did not understand and yet, they did not ask him question. I don't think because they were up, they takot sila. But actually, takot talaga sila. It's not because rude yung ating pangsus, but because they are afraid of the answer. You know why? Pagbabasahin nyo, next week preaching ni Pastor Dong, mayroon tayo, ang tawag lang pagkaba, 
Ah, pag nanonood ka ng movie na merong dollar? Spoiler. 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 verse 46. Pag 48, nagtatalo-talo sila sa Manila kasi ang ating mga susis entering Jerusalem, paniwala nila so that He may establish the kingdom of God so that Jesus Christ as the Messiah, He will rule on Jerusalem and He will overthrow Rome and He will rule the world through Jerusalem. Yun ang mindset. Kaya nga pagdating sa verse 46, 48, ano pinag-usapan nila? Sino yung maupo sa kanan, maupo sa kaliwa? Diba? Sabi nila is, sino, sino yung great sa kanila? Pinag-usapan nila, who is the great among themselves? Imagine nyo, hindi nga naman pala, isang demonyo, and then, sandaling basahin lang, nag-aaway-aaway sila kung sino yung great, sino yung maupo sa kanan, sino yung maupo sa kaliwa. Why? Because of that presupposition na meron sila that when the Messiah comes, sabi ko nga, He will rule the world at yung kanyang center of power is in Jerusalem at He will overthrow yung Roman Empire. Yun yung kanilang presupposition. Kaya ayaw nilang magtanong na kung saan, mamamatay siya. Pangalawang beses na niyang sinasabi, mamamatay siya. Wala po silang theology na yung kanilang Messiah ay mamamatay. And that's the danger. That is the debilitating power of unbelief. That is the debilitating power of unbelief. Bakit? Because meron silang preconceived ideas, preconceived thoughts of what the Messiah is about. They are unwilling to listen dun sa sinasabi ng ating Panginoos. And that's a problem of many people. Buong bata ka pa lang, and then doctrinate ka na lang, kung ano naman. And so, pag kami magsabi sa'yo na ito yung dapat gawin, ayaw mo na makinig kasi puno na yung cup. Yung cup natin, puno na, kailangan mong itapon yung mga, yung mga unnecessary so that the necessary might have space, might speak. Yun po dapat tayo. Even sa ating ministry, sometimes we have a lot of these preconceived ideas how to serve. Diba? But then, because of those preconceived ideas how to serve, sometimes it hinders us para hindi makita yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. Ito po yung nangyari sa mga lagad. That's why they were so debilitated. Debilitated in isang, they don't have power. Why? It's not because the power is not there available, but because it hampers them because of their unbelief, because of their preconceived ideas sa kanilang mga isip about the Lord Jesus Christ. Naniniwala sila that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, but then they have another set of ideas kung ano yung gagawin ng Messiah pag dumating siya. But, the Lord Jesus Christ, sabi niya, I must be delivered, sabi niya, to the hand of man. The way to glory, na sinasabi ng ating Pangsus, is the way to the cross. There's no shortcut. The way to glory is to the cross. Sa ito yung mga alagad. Yung mga alagad, nagpapaunahan sila kung sino yung maupo sa kanan, sa kaliwa. Sino yung great among themselves. But then, the Lord Jesus Christ teaching them, whoever is the greatest among you must go last. Must be a servant. Servant heart, servant attitude. Not someone na yung paa na kataas at nagsisindihan. Our Savior is a servant. Even now, He's serving in heaven. He's serving us. He's praying for us. He's interceding for us. And so, we too are encouraged to serve. To serve Him, to serve one another, and to serve para sa proclamation ng good news so that others also might, be, might believe and be set free from the tyranny and dominion of Satan.
Because there's no other way. They have to hear the gospel that they might believe. How can they believe? Something I say, unless someone is sent. And how can they hear? Kung wala pong magsasalta. Pinagalit ko lang yung ikili sila. At yung iba ang mga pangyayon. Point to Podon is people need to hear the gospel because people are in this very hopeless situation without Christ. And the destructive power of Satan is real. Without Christ, people perish. But praise God, we have delivered Jesus Christ even in our debilitation. When, we are un when there's unbelief, we cry to Him, Lord, help our unbelief and He will help us. Because sa ating sarili, there's no way for us to accomplish, to carry out yung kanyang task para sa atin. Praise God, binigay niya yung kanyang bal spirito so that we have both the willingness and the power to do one in nice men para sa atin. Let us all stand and as we Did he distribute the um, elements of the Lord's Supper? I encourage you to seek our hearts. Ano ba yung mga instances sa ating mga buhay na kung saan we cannot hear God, we cannot see His will because of our preconceived ideas, preconceived thoughts sa ating mga isipan that hampers us or hinders us to see and to hear yung pangusa ng Panginoon. And let us take this time to ask the Lord for forgiveness and restoration. Kung paano yung Ama cried out for help, we can cry for help sa ating Diyos. Let us give mga two minutes po. Let us search our hearts at tayo ay amanalan. Sabi po sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for you, which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat it, this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us all partake of the Lord's cup. While you remain standing, receive the closing prayer and the benediction. Father, help us, O God 
that the things we have heard would sink in into our hearts, into our minds, and move our arms and our legs. Lord, help us to put into practice, into application, the things that we have heard from your holy word. Because your word are true, living and active of life. Help us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. Because without your God, we can do nothing with God. And now to him who loves us and has freed us from the dominion of sins and from the tyranny of the devil. By his sins, by, her, by his blood, he made us a kingdom of priests, who is God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.